every time I would call it, I will teach you, because it's just not me a lot of the time. It's so, so many other people need to take the credit. So it, it just felt right on every, on every level. So talk a little bit about that then. How do you go from, you know, being a language learner to, you know, feeling like, okay, I'm proficient in these languages, I'm fluent, I can speak these different languages, to actually getting to a point where you feel confident that you can help people learn in different ways and then developing materials like books. I know you've published several books in different languages. How do you really make that shift? Because it's one thing to say, okay, I can speak Spanish or I can speak Portuguese, but it's another thing entirely to write a book for intermediate learners of that language. How did you kind of go through that process and make that transition from learner to teacher? Yeah, well, the thing is, I've always been a teacher. That's the thing. So I I didn't mention this in, in, in my little potted bio earlier, but I... About, uh, let me think, about 12 years or, or so ago now, I actually um, changed career and started teaching English. So I took a qualification as, a, as an English teacher and I went to live in Japan to teach English. And I, so I lived in Japan for years teaching English and then, and then got quite serious about the teaching side of it. So I went on to do a diploma and then a master's degree in linguistics and got very kind of highly qualified as a teacher. And so one of the things that I, I feel has been quite useful for me in developing my my career with languages has been the fact that I've I've had this experience as a language learner but also as a language teacher which I, I, I think helps me do one thing in particular which is like beyond learning languages which is actually to be able to explain concepts and I feel like I, I'm I've developed the ability to explain concepts in a way which which people can relate to and understand and that was kind of honed over many years through my uh, through writing blog posts and things like that. So actually, when it came to putting, to creating courses and things like that, it was actually really the most, the easiest thing in the world because I, I, I already knew the, the theory. You know, a lot of people who don't have teaching experience, they ask yourself, well, how do you teach a language? The only frame of reference they have is, hey, this is what I did. And I think this is where a lot of people struggle because that's all, that's the only reference they have. It's like, here's what I did. And teaching people what you did is not necessarily the right way to, to do it. You know, just because it worked for you doesn't mean that it will work for them. Um, so but in my case, because I'd spent so many years teaching and I was very familiar with lots of different teaching teaching theories, the, 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 the science of um, second language acquisition, that I was able to, to put together methodologies for learning through stories that I was confident with because I, I know the literature, I know the research and I know the, the practicum as well from having done it for so many years. So, I mean, we, we could talk sp um, specifics if you like about the, about learning with, with stories, but it was, it was actually one of the easier things for me because I, I've, all, I've had so many years of that teaching experience. You know, you said something that really stood out to me was just that, you know, a lot of people teach what they did and that doesn't always work for people i think there's a great parallel with that in in music as well so like with, with dancing salsa there are some great dancers right and you look at them and you watch them in awe and you're like oh my god they're like the best dancers and then you go to take a class with them and you realize you're not really learning anything because like you're not able to to sort of dance the way that that they do and they're not able to teach it because they feel like they have this sort of like innate ability um and it's so it's really funny that you mentioned that because there's some really great dance teachers as well that are great teachers, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're the person that you're watching like on Dancing with the Stars or whatever like that. So it's just funny that you, you kind of mentioned that, that you do have people that are very proficient, but it doesn't mean that they're good at teaching. So uh, that just kind of stood out for me. <laughs> yeah, the, well, the, the, the teacher, does, you know, the, the, the teacher doesn't have to be the, the practitioner, you know, I mean, think, think of, the, of the great sports coaches, you know, Roger Federer's tennis coach would lose to Roger Federer in a, uh, in a, in a game, you know, the same for, for, for all, all different kinds of coaches. Some of these coaches, in fact, never really had careers at all. They just become, become coaches and, 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 you know, you can develop the ability by working with, with students for long enough to actually be able to, to become an effective guide. Um, and so, you know, you, I think you, you can, you, you do get teachers, language teachers, for example, who are not particularly good at language learning, but are great teachers over you know through 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 decades of of practice but i personally do feel that especially with language learning it having the experience of having learned languages really does count because the thing that's unique about language learning and everyone listening will immediately uh, appreciate this is that it's really it's a really nebulous thing 
you know it's very difficult to be specific about progress to feel you don't feel progress from one day to the next or one or even one month to the next it's the nature of learning a language is more like you know you kind of study for a year and you realize hey i I'm, I'm better than I was a year ago, but I can't tell you when it happened or how it happened. You know, it's such a nebulous thing that I think the language learning, perhaps more than other disciplines, does really benefit from the teacher having the experience because it's, it's more difficult in language learning, I think, for, for, for teachers to really give truths because there are very few truths with language learning. You know, effective language learning is, mu- is far more about uh, issues around motivation, for example, or or social anxiety, or self-discipline, or, or little things like having the time or being able to create the time in your life to actually learn. Like these are the things which can can really torpedo your your, your progress. And I think if you if you haven't experienced that in yourself, by, by yourself, it can be very difficult to actually effectively help a student through the learning process. Right, which is which is why I think that you know. There's this bias, I think, when when people are looking for language teachers that, oh, I have to have a native speaker. It has to be a native speaker. But I think that what you sort of lose with that, if that native speaker has not had that experience in learning another language, right, that yeah. it's it's really difficult for them not only to teach you, but also to explain the features of their own language. Because I know, I don't know about you, but like with English, if someone was to ask me, is the verb to be an irregular verb? Like I wouldn't... I, you know, like I don't have all this stuff like at the top of my head and I haven't really spent a lot of time explaining English grammar. It's just sort of that's how you say it. Right. So when you come across a native speaker, they just go, that sounds wrong. This is how it's supposed to sound. They can't really give you a proper explanation unless they've been properly trained. And the ones I found that are the best are also ones who have also learned other languages so they can help you. Uh, but but even still with that, I would rather learn from someone who learned that language because they can point out those things. Ah, this is kind of like this in English or, hey, this is kind of like that in French. If you know French, like having that exposure, I think, is is really important with languages because all those connections really help you remember um, and really grasp things. Whereas just like, oh, that's the way it, it is, is not the best explanation <laughs> that you can get. I absolutely agree. And let, let me tell you, like some through all the, the the teacher training programs that I've been on over the years and, and also delivered because I, I, I was a teacher trainer for some time as well. Some of the best teachers, certainly some of the best English teachers that I ever I ever came across were were non-native speakers, uh, NNS as, the, as, the, as they're known. And it's, and it's for exactly the reason that you say. So the English teaching world is, a, is a, an oddity because English teachers on the whole, you know, they, they travel abroad to teach. And then the English teaching world has, has kind of created this this kind of um, this unspoken rule that, well, in fact, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not unspoken at all. It's, it's kind of the perceived wisdom that all language classes should be in the target language. So you have... Um, English teachers who are from the UK or from the US would travel to Japan and they would teach Japanese students and the class would have to be in English. And and the kind of th- the, the theory, which I think is a bit of a cheap theory, is that, well, if you keep, the more that you keep the class in the target language, the more they're going to learn. 